Formula Chairs. There's another event we're planning to do coming up in October. Uh, it's going to be here at the Clipper as well. So, as you know, Sharon is a pillar of our community. She community. Who doesn't lots know of that? Who does not know me? She really, really, <laughs> really, really fills for Rockingham, and we love that. So enjoy the night, enjoy the Clipper, and uh, thanks, Sharon. Does anyone need, need more chairs? Oh, are you serious? That is the weakest clap ever. <laughs> We're just going to get a few more chairs, so hang on one second, boys and girls. And um, it's not 5.30 yet, I just wanted to see if we had enough chairs. And clearly, we didn't. See, because I was getting all these messages going, oh, I can't come, it's raining. I'm a bit like that. It's like, no, don't take me out in the rain, I melt. I haven't showered since 1967, actually. Come on, I'm normally funny. It's not bad for someone who's 35. Oh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> so good with maths, obviously. Mm. Is my face right? <laughs> Alrighty. So where are we people from? Give me a call out. Give me a shout out. Where are you from, Nikki Brown? Over the park. Over the park. <laughs> well, that's illegal what you do now, sweetheart, in that park. <laughs> However, let me say her husband is a, a world-renowned psychic and medium. And he also manages a... Um, a uh, uh, not a mind site, but uh, yes, talk to me. Am I saying it right, Simon? A what? Sorry. You don't manage a mind site. You are a. I, uh, yes, I work in the uh, corporate engineering sector. Corporate engineering sector. He's a very funny man, a great man, and I'll tell you what. Elvis is not dead, ladies and gentlemen. When he sings, Elvis oh. channels through his body. <laughs> Ronnie, stand up. Oh. Ronnie, oh, see this lovely lady behind you, everyone. This is Rani. Rani's a dentist. She can't show you her face. <laughs> She's very, very good. She's up in Fremantle. And uh, she actually, uh, if you read her reviews, a very, very calming, very calming lady. Um, I'm one of those people that, look at that, my hands cracked a sweat the second I heard the word dentist. Yeah. I'm from that, that yeah. age. Yeah. Definitely. When I was about, I don't know, 12, I was driving my car in the paddock. And I pushed a gate on a practic uh, the back of the farm, and uh, the gate just swung straight back in my mouth, took all my teeth out. My mother sat there in the farmhouse and said, "Now we got an hour and a half to get to the dentist." And I remember thinking, "Am I worth it?" She said, "No." Oh, <laughs> yeah, I was put in an orphanage after that. <laughs> Dean, stand up. God love you. You know I have to do it, even though it's an IBS room. See this hunk of spunk. <coughs> this great big giant hunk of spunk. <coughs> this is Dean. Dean's single, girls. I'm not dating anyone. Are you not dating anyone? Do you want it to be? I can oh. make it that way. <laughs> 60 second date. Oh, you can close the door. Oh. All right. Dean, ladies and gentlemen, um, is one of the owners of... Oh, my God, you look amazing. You have not aged. Oh, can I say bitch out loud? You look great, Jody. Absolutely amazing. Amazing. Anyway, back to the most gorgeous man in the room. Uh, please, stand up. <laughs> he knows who he is. This gentleman owns Worldwide Decor. So if you're actually looking, uh, manages Worldwide Decor, if you're looking for any, um, uh, tro uh, what do you call it, uh, paintings, uh, art, sculptures, etc., cetera, et cetera, um, Worldwide Decor can certainly look after you. Yes. Mickey, she gets you drunk on kombucha. Have we got everybody here yet? And this is Paul, Paul Stevenson. Furniture removalist. Furniture removalist. <laughs> it's not what he does though, that's for sure. Jody Payne, how are you? You look great, you really do. Jodie and myself were um, involved in the Rockingham Chamber of Commerce 20 odd years ago, easy. And uh, we ran the Spring Festival. And uh, actually, as a matter of fact, the person I'm standing up here for, and Jodie, I, I don't know if you know this at all, but do you remember, um, I'm 54 years of age. No. I've taught, <laughs> very good. 54 years of age, I've taught over 25,000 people Facebook. I've taught debt collection. I've made an absolute fortune working this room and every other room around Australia. I've traveled to Bali, I've traveled internationally. And Jody, do you know you started it all? Did you know that? 
No, no, I'm being serious. And one of the things, I'm really grateful to actually have that situation to be able to say thank you publicly. And I put it in the business awards as well because Jodie actually started the NICE program many, many years ago. And she asked me if I would actually be the um, debt collection speaker. And uh, I realised from that that I had a gift for public speaking. And um, I, I think I do. You can all make up your own mind. <laughs> But Jodie, you were the one that started this. And in a couple of weeks time, I'm actually launching your social media career, which is basically a social media school, the only social media school in Australia. And I'm, you turned my corner. You actually made it happen. Thank you. I really mean that. Round of applause for Jodie. And Rob at the back there and Ian Duperuzel, they were also on the Spring Festival. And uh, Diana, do you want to stand up, gorgeous one? And next to her is Caroline. Caroline owns a uh, winery. Caroline is everyone's best friend in this room. <laughs> and uh, these gorgeous ladies are involved with the Chamber of Commerce. I don't think uh, anyone else in the room is, is there? Karen. Oh, Karen, hi, nice to see you, darling. I did, you were hiding behind there. Um, and uh, you guys have actually got a lot of really great work coming up as well. There's a, a Chamber of Commerce function here in September that is basically organising for um, uh, the Minister of Business to come in here and talk as well. So if anyone has anything or wants to get involved in the Chamber, they are very, very proactive. So um, is everyone in now? Scott? I'm here. Uh, <laughs> that's all that matters. Don't Ladies, <laughs> Really, Mickey? Really? She's working for me. Is everyone here, Scott? Yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, whenever you're ready, if anyone's got any objections to going live, do let me know. Um, I won't care, but uh, do let me know. Are we already live? <laughs> oh, well, super. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Better watch my language and I don't swear then. Okay, why am I reading this, ladies and gentlemen? I'm reading it because I actually get distracted very simply, very quickly, and I go off into shining objects. Normally when I train, normally when I teach people, um, when I taught at TAFE, I would sit on a desk cross-legged. Um, yes, I taught at TAFE as well, so thank you again, Jodie. In that same side of it, I basically have been in an environment where I know my product inside and out. However, my workshops and seminars are running normally about three hours. I've condensed this down a lot for you. And to tell you, on the paperwork, you'll actually get an email tomorrow. And in that email, or Wednesday or Thursday, and the email will actually have a link on it. And the link will take you to the blog. And everything that I've written here today, hi Colleen, everything that I've written here today, there's one up the front if you need, babe. We'll wait for you. No, no, seriously, we'll wait. <laughs> no, the, <laughs> the thing here is the, um, what do you call it, all this information is all here. Now, in it as well, there's a link to a guy that does photography classes. Um, and your iPhone is, is honestly the most amazing piece of material that you can have. It's got a lot of information that is available to you. But this is just an overview seminar and on talking about the how. Anyone can do Facebook, but if you don't actually understand how Facebook works, all you're going to be doing is selling at it and your page is going to be dead. So I'm going to read from this, but I'm going to be interactive, but unfortunately I just need to be blunt with you guys. If I don't focus and read, I'll end up being distracted. So before we move on, I need to tell you why I've done this for free. I've done it for free and I hate the word free because I think free implies cheap. But I've done it for four reasons. The first one is it builds up your trust in me. The second one is whilst Facebook is not a numbers game, I'm sitting on 980 likers. Man, I need that thousand. So I need you. It's an OCD thing. I need you to open your phone apps over the next 24 hours and I'll hunt you down. I know your cards. And I just need the like button, please. I need to get over that thousand if it's the last thing I do. Thank you for that. Um, the second one is that you're welcome to join a group. Now, Michelle Windrum, where are you? Stand up, Michelle Windrum. Michelle Windrum owns CTMA Consultants. And one of the uh, things that I discovered with Michelle a few years back is that she has a talent for social media. So what I did when I discovered that talent, um, I said, you should be actually running your own business. And she was. So Jodie, from me to her, and it progresses on. So, ladies and gentlemen, Michelle's smart, she's good, and works with a specific demographic. At the end of the day, um, if you have any questions, if you would like private one-to-one -one information, Michelle's the lady to go for. There's no kickbacks, no upsells. I don't like upsells, and I hate bait-and-click seminars. But Michelle is the person if you need any help and support later on. Thanks, Michelle. So not only that, ladies and gentlemen, I get to do what I really want to do mostly, and that is ask you guys to follow the hashtag and work with any beach trader at the moment. Beach trader restaurants, stand up. 
please, yeah, please stand up. Guys, I need you guys to understand that we need to support the foreshore businesses during the renos. What happened in Mandra and what happened in Scarborough can't happen in Rockingham. People didn't mean to stay away from the cafes, they didn't mean to stay away from the restaurants, but they did. And businesses lost jobs and people lost income and businesses closed down. So yes, it may be a little bit awkward to actually find parking, but at the same time, take the effort because you could be saving a family. And Clint, you've got kids, haven't you? Yes. Yep, perfect. So when you're working with these guys on the foreshore, you're really working with them. So that hashtag, ladies and gentlemen, is support our beach fund traders during the renovations. So there's no upsell. Um, I need to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't declare anything in a proposal straight on the front page, what happens is nobody pays attention. If you get a proposal and you're searching for all the information, you're really not paying any attention until you see the dollar figure. So that's why I did that first, because people wait to these seminars and they're so used to the bait and sell, it's where's the bait and sell at the end of it? Well, there isn't gonna be any. Everything you get tonight is courtesy of myself and everything is my opinion. To be honest with Facebook, if you're doing it, ladies and gentlemen, you're already winning, so just keep doing it. Put one photo up and one photo only. Make a comment, make a noise, do it about four times a week. I think we need to talk right now the importance of having multiple administrators on a page. If you're only one person that runs a Facebook page and you die, then your page is almost inaccessible. So if you don't trust somebody else to admin the page with you, I beg you, leave your, u yes, look at him, look at him. Go, I want your username and password and your bank account details. Absolutely. Is, is he your husband? No. No? <laughs> okay, then I want your bank account details. So basically in that side of it, I cannot stress enough in your will, get your username and password to be left on the actual will. There is an action where you can have four friends get into your Facebook page if anything happens to you, but it can be difficult. They've also got to know information. So on all your passwords, on Google+, Plus, your bank account, anything, leave those details in your will. The importance of having multiple administrations we've done. Facebook and social media, ladies and gentlemen, should only be 15% of your marketing. Okay, so a lot of people put 100% effort into Google, into places, into Instagram, etc. Don't worry about making it your be-all and end-all. Instagram and Facebook should only be around about 15% of your marketing. So the truth is, unless you understand why people are on social media, it isn't going to work. It's not about you, it's about them. People want to feel important and feel like they have a voice and are validated. Therefore, they will share and like what is important and relevant to them. When someone gives a review or a referral, it makes them feel knowledgeable and listened to. People want to be heard, seen, and value, valued. Anyone can do Facebook. They make it so user-friendly. And there is a YouTube for everything. There is a how-to, just type in, how do I do this? How do I get more likers? How do I upsell a photo? How do I do it? Somebody's created a video. And mind you, no sooner do you create a video, Facebook changes the rules anyway. But in saying that, Facebook help section is also available. But you have to understand, social media is social. It is not selling at you. If you're trying to sell your business on Facebook, nobody cares, nobody's interested and nobody actually wants to get involved with them. So we're gonna talk a little bit about marketing. Marketing is not your products and services. That is the buy end of it. Marketing is a number of factors. It is emotion. You all created an emotion the second you met me tonight. You either liked me, didn't like me, thought I was funny. Some of you probably thought I was overweight. I am, but I'm trying to do something about it. <laughs> problem solving. The problem solving is I am your problem solver tonight. You need more information on Facebook. I'm solving the problem, hopefully. People do business with those they know, like, and trust. Facebook gives you that opportunity where people get to know you, like you, and trust you. It is also about customer service and valuing yourself. You only buy from those that you know, like, and trust, and every decision a person makes in business is based on emotion. If somebody makes you feel good, then they'll stick with you. And you can do that through social media. Don't ever, ever put anything negative on Facebook. Uh, don't argue, 
don't get engaged in any <coughs> idiots out there. Just don't get involved in Facebook negativity. Be positive, be positive, be positive. What's in it for me? It's not about what's in it for me. It's what's in it for the customer. What do they get out of it? Consider you've all gained again tonight. The whiffing factor is more information on Facebook. Do it for me, especially millennials. What work can you do for them? Those that own hotels and restaurants and things like that, can't the hotels in particular, the booking forms, can you fill them all in so that when they come to your premises, it's already filled in and all they need to do is just sign it off. The do it for me factor comes from those millennial ages where we as parents pretty much did everything for our children. Yeah. Make it easy. We have made it too easy, but at the same time, they're turning things around. It is also purchases are based on three objectives, the want, the need, and the desire. I want a ring from Lovell's Jewelers. I need it, food, groceries, mechanical repairs, electricity, uh, clothes. I desire a dinner party with the royal family, or perhaps over your place one night. Um, a trip to India, but I can't go until the Taj Mahal has the work around it. Uh, the scaffolding down. What's the point in having that great photo of the Taj Mahal with the scaffolding in it? Problem with consolving. Consider that you have no idea how to groom a dog, that you don't want a big mess in your house. I've no time to walk in. So address the marketing from that angle, you being the solution. Again tonight, I'm the problem solver for Facebook. Here's an example if you were a pool shop, then post and read something like, if you hate cleaning your pool, then don't. Allow us to do it for you. Call me on 041800 and see how affordable it is. Allow us to give your time back. So problem, I'll be the solution. Here's the number you call. How we make decisions on business and who we go with now has forever changed. How many research the establishment before we go into a store? It's not now what you, the business, thinks of your business. It's how your customers think and share and review your business. And just in case anyone's wondering, reviews no longer exist on Facebook. Did you all know that? No. no. no? They've replaced it now with recommendations. It's either a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Not sure I like it yet, Zuki. So if you're watching this, mate, um, I think it just gives... Some people don't like give five stars. They don't like it. So I think it's going to be a little different now. You know, so it's either thumbs up, thumbs down. So And they're called uh, recommendations. It's going dry. It's, you either like them or you don't. No, but I work for John Hughes and he rings people and say, you know, how, why did I not get perfect? And people will often say, I just never will give a perfect review. Mm -hmm. Some people by their very nature, I'm, I'm one that, that exceeds, you know, give me the five, that's fine. I do it. But there are people out there that refuse to give full marks for people. It's, it's, we're all different. The old reviews have stayed up there? Yes, the old reviews have stayed up there. Yeah. And they've actually given a ranking number based on the old reviews. But now it's just up or down. Yeah. So there is a great YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the audience of millennials, I need you to understand, is that by 2020, most of the workforce will be millennials. Right? There's a really great YouTube of a little two-year-old playing with the, a, you know, mummy, 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 my iPad won't work, my iPad won't work, and she's pushing the buttons and pushing the buttons. She's not pushing any buttons. She's actually playing with the Woman's Day magazine that she doesn't know print media. There's also our generation, we no longer ask for taxis. Everybody now, even when you want a taxi, up to the front here, Linda, there's a chair up here if you want. Oh, Mickey saved you one as well, babe. Um, so uh, people ask for Uber now. So, however, 62% of all registered businesses are owner operators, with an average person being my age and a little older, 60 to 69. 62% of all registered businesses are one-person operators who work from home. Um, we each turn around about an average of $150,000 per annum, and one in every three of those is aged between the ages of 60 and 69. They hated it when they retired, they cashed in their super, and they now run businesses. The point of all this is that when you market, don't just market to your age. Don't market to just my age. There's demographics across the board. There's widows, there's older people, there's younger people, there's people that like to go out, there's people that like to stay home. So when you're marketing, you've really got to look at all genres and not just think, I'm a 54-year-old, very attractive, wealthy woman. I'll only 
park it to 54, thank you, Diana, you got it, um, 54 people, you know, etc. I When I think of my marketing with uh, the stand-up paddleboarding with other stuff, I actually think of what demographic am I looking at with this product. And when I market it, I market it in mind. And each, you know, each time I do an ad, I, I can't actually do ads every week to that one person. So this week it might be calling all those that are 20, 25 year olds. We've got this for you. Next week might be a youth 45 and want a night out. We're the people. So really value the fact that across the board, not every post has to be to the one genre. Do demographic in arrangements. Many people I hear often ask the young person in the business to run the Facebook page. Oh, I just get the young person to do that. A young pool shop did that. She then spammed every group in Rockingham. And basically, when she was told, this is a group that's a, a, a chat group, we don't buy and sell, her response was to F off. Now, that's exactly because you need a mature, intelligent person who understands adults on social media. You understand marketing, everything you do. People always go, it's only Facebook. Well, let me tell you, Facebook is a legal entity. It is a valuable tool. I sold my Facebook page, my Rockingham processor business. Um, Peter will attest to this. I sold it for thousands and thousands of dollars. And all I had was a Facebook page and a website. So it is a tangible asset with a real value. The more likers you have, the more interaction, the more goodwill your business can tangibly sell. Your social media page is the forefront of what people see and hear about your business. So you need someone with a sound knowledge of resolving issues in a mature way to manage your page. After all, your marketing is what people feel, know and like about you. In the end, that business suffered due to what the way that page was actioned. Don't try and overload every post with every bit of information. Short, sharp, to the point. If you've gone to the see more, you've gone too far. There is one exception. And that exception, ladies and gentlemen, is when you update a cover picture. You should be updating your cover picture every week. For a real estate agent, it should be a, a home of the week. And the actual uh, writer description on the cover photo should actually be war and peace. It should be a whole good few paragraphs and at the bottom of it, a call to action. Your name, your address, your telephone number, etc. The way that a cover photo go down the wall goes down the wall is different to the way that a actual um, post goes down the wall. So a cover photo should be changed every week, every fortnight, every month. It should be changed. Don't make it about you. As Facebook says, it's the most valuable piece of real estate on the Facebook page. Why are you not selling it to your clients? Why are you not using it to promote your clients? Why are you not using it to promote your actual region? So your cover is very, very important. If you're doing ads, that's a different story. Ads is uh, about uh, a different seminar. Uh, you've got to be the solution. Um, you've actually got to have, it's a very specific the way ads are done. Um, too much, far too much to go into tonight. If anyone's interested, we might do another one of these and just do it on ads. Because there's, you know, you can't, you've got to move the placements. How many here boost posts? Yeah, stop. They don't work. They just don't work. Uh, why don't they work? Because all you're doing is boosting it to the people that are already in your group. A social media manager will tell you boost posts are, how many viewers have we got? Many? How many viewers? I don't know if I should do this on live. We call them because in that side of it, it doesn't go anywhere. It's just Facebook's way of making a little bit extra money for you. If you're actually going to do an ad, do it properly. Go in through the back of Business Manager, create audiences, create Pacific audiences. Take a few days to do the whole thing. <coughs> remove the placements. You don't need to see your ad on 12 different things. So do you remove pla ad placements when you do them, ads? Most people don't even know it exists. That's the point. People just, Facebook make it easy and they go, boost this post and you go click, 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 but effectively you're, you're pretty much throwing your money away. So that's another seminar, another time, another talk. And if you want any information, I can certainly help you with that. If you're doing ads, we've done that one. MDVS has always had the, MDVS stands for must deliver value and service. I hope I'm doing fine so far. If not, well, not my issue. Thank you. <laughs> I thought it was funny. <laughs> MDBS has always had the mantra, knowledge is power, education is the key. You be the educator. Stop trying to not let your competitors know what you're doing. They already know. Whichever business is regular in their updates and posts wins. Why? Because they're seen as the market leaders, therefore post every second day, various times, 
and various information. You will hear a lot of people say post daily. I believe very much about posting four times a week for those in your room here. Um, I've been uh, monitoring a lot of posts and doing a lot of research on whether or not posting every day is relevant. It's not. It's actually annoying for your customers because nobody's that invested in your business. And there's a big difference between what I want you to understand is this. I want you to engage every four days, not post every seven. So engagement is the key. Engagement. We'll talk about that in a second. Emotion. Every single thing we do is based on it. I have over the years have had seven posts go viral in the true sense of the word. All of them with a reach of over half a million people and one even had millions of people. All of them, every one of those ones that went viral had a very short, sharp, simple message. One was a dog's foot that had burns on it. Uh, Dean, thanks, mate. Um, uh, if it's too hot for your bare feet, it's too hot for your furry loved one. And it had the burn paw. And that went on even Channel 7 News. Everything in marketing, again, is emotion-based. So don't sell at me. I don't care. Create an emotion. So are you tired all the time? I can fix it. Do you need a holiday? I'm it. Do you want to come to the beachfront where there's so many restaurants? We're it. Be the emotion. If you can as well, make them laugh. To have to engage such as using a meme, it's okay. It, look, one of the things I do for um, one of the things I do for uh, HBG accountants often is I create memes using Canva. Canva is brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. If you can find a, a YouTube to learn how to do that. I also think I've got a link in there as well in this thing. Canva, basically, you create a photo, put your meme on it. And with HBG, I'll often put three apples equals this, four apples equals that. What is five bananas? And honestly, they just go to town on it. It's, it's you know, finding all these silly little ideas um, and quiz questions. People really enjoy being engaged with it. Like, for example, Worldwide Decor, he could put up a picture of the Titanic. He's got a Titanic model. And then underneath it, he could ask, did you know um, one man survived the actual floating in the water for two and a half hours while everybody else died within two and a half minutes? The reason he survived is because when he knew he was going down, he drank a bottle of scotch. His body was completely so relaxed, he actually didn't get hypothermia. The whole Titanic is full of very, very interesting conversations. Um, the the uh, four violinist guys actually uh, played to the, 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 the thing went down. But what you didn't realise is that when their wives asked to get their compensation for being staff, white uh, star liners said, you won't staff your subcontractors, we don't owe you anything. And so those men actually think, so see, looking at your faces, you can see little interesting tidbits of information like that um, is fascinating, absolutely fascinating. So share, share that stuff. People love it. It's also great, you know, so hey, this is your answer for a quiz question if you're coming up in a quiz question. So um, if you can get them to think or laugh, do so. And tell your story, your whole story. Be personable, but not private. So many people go, oh, but I don't want people knowing my business. Do you know there's a difference between being personal and a difference between being private? So I'm not going to sit there and take a photo of myself on the toilet. No, my business partner did that. He took a photo of me on a cruise while I was on the toilet. I found two days later it was sitting on my Facebook page. I laughed. I laughed. I know, yeah, we all remember it. It was shared so many times. Thank you to all my friends. So I don't suggest you do that. I really don't suggest you do it. But by all means, be personal. Tell us about your kids. Tell us about your family. Many times I hear people say to me, do you know that post I did about me recently becoming a grandparent got more traction than me trying to sell my product? It's because social media is social. Facebook is your own private TV station, ladies and gentlemen. It's full of documentaries. It's full of comedies. It's full of educational programs. It's full of serials, rom-coms. And it's full of ads. But you don't watch the ads on TV. So don't make your Facebook page nothing but ads. Make it interesting. Tell us a little bit about your business. Tell us a little bit about, you know, funny, some of your funny customers. I posted yesterday, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I just got rid of a, 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 a what it was it? Ha hallelujah, praise the Lord. Just got rid of a C-class client. And people were just jumping straight underneath it, you know. Wow, good on you. It's like, you, these are things that you can actually do. And it, it, I'm confident in what I say in that particular situation. You may not be confident in that, but as a leader in business, I teach people don't play with the C-class clients. You know, they cost you a lot of money, they don't refer you, and then want everything for nothing and then complain about the price. 
Um, so it's very rare I actually work with C-class clients. Um, but in saying that, there's three people in the room I work with and I love you all very, very much and I'm not about to lose you. Hey, Rainy. Mm -hmm. Hey, Simon. <laughs> I love doing your... Si oh, Simon's page was great. Simon's a psychic medium. So what stuff did I put up? Ghost stories. Unusual ways in which we buried people. Um, what were some of the... Uh, shoes. Because shoes actually were an element of when bodies were pushed away from the graves and things like that and just really 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 interesting things don't don't just think it has to be about your business create visions and, and other things dentistry there was one that was done um uh, century 21 did one the other day um it was uh, uh, but unfortunately what he did was he put a picture up of century 21 the logo and i've been thinking about this all day and he, he it was a great story on century 21 and you guys are there put your hand up or not great post but do you know what i thought about instead of actually doing instead of that how about this what has a root canal got to do with selling and buying real estate and then putting up the century uh, like a, a root canal photo the century 21 name is already branded in the page but see it would grab that different attention because who would expect a real estate agent to talk about the actual root canals but it would just make a really interesting thing because people would want to read. What's the difference between having a root canal and a, faith, and a, a, a real estate? So it's, it's about standing back from a little thing and thinking and posing a little bit more questions. Stand outside the square as much as you can. Ladies and gentlemen, your post is only alive for two hours. Anything after that, it's gone. Post, it goes down into that abyss, the Facebook abyss. Post a combination of talking about your business, sharing about your personal life and staff, general information about the community, guys. Uh, Rockingham Wild Encounters at the moment. Put your hand up if you've got a, um, a bed and breakfast or a travel place here in Rockingham. Eh? Put your hand up if you've got a business in Rockingham. Eh? All of you could do this. Right now, Rockingham Wild Encounters um, have actually got two for one. So share that. People go, hey, listen, this has nothing to do with my business, but if you've ever wanted to be out with the dolphins, they're offering two for one at the moment. So straight up, wow, really? Thank you so much. They'll remember you for giving them that. If anyone is interested, I am looking for free tickets to the Royal Show. <laughs> I am actually serious. <laughs> at, at least once a week, make a post that has a phone number or an email contact on it. Okay, don't make me go searching for it. Many people think it's on my page, and yes, it is, but we are now people that if we can't find something in one or two clicks, we go find it somewhere else. So at least once a week, put up your telephone number and your contact details. Sometimes even as simple as I've taken a photo of my phone once with the telephone number on it. If you want me, this is my number. It's just little simple things that can make a difference. Short posts, one photo or video. One photo or video. How many ever post more than one? It's okay, you, no, you walk on to where you have When you do that, ladies and gentlemen, what you don't realise is Facebook splits the post. So if you put up 15 photos on my wall, as I go down the thread, I'm getting 15 posts. And each one of them has just um, ABC, 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 with no comment. There's only one with a comment. So if you're going to post more than one photo, create an album and make sure you put a comment in each one. One photo one photo only. Make it short, sharp and simple. At tag the business. And what I mean by that is use the at symbol and then immediately straight after put your business name. Never hashtag on Facebook. At tag is for two reasons. A, if then people hover over it, they can hit the like button. And the second thing with that as well is that it takes a black post and has a little bit of colour in it that can make a bit of a distraction. You cannot at tag if you're using and uploading through a phone. Sometimes it works, but, but often it doesn't. It will work 100% of the time on a desktop. Unless Facebook are menopausal. Then I can't do anything about that. Short post, if you've gone to the see more, you've gone too far. So if you look at the post and, and it's gone see more, try and shorten it a bit. All right, people don't have time to click it and read any further. Make sure your page is complete, ladies and gentlemen. I see so many Facebook pages and there's like no story, there's no services, there's no notes, there's no reviews, there's no GPS connected to your Google address. There are 44 actions pertaining to your account on uh, this 
on the page on my website on my blog you will actually have every single one of those so you can tick and tick tick and tick and tick and tick ad services services are you know we offer uh, peter butler for example we offer seo services we offer social media management we offer email marketing um there's a va in the room put it put, where's the va yep so you offer mailchimp you offer landing pages yeah. yep so all of those things are different, all right? So make sure you add the services. Update your cover picture. Your cover picture is not about you. The cover picture is always about someone else, a product, a service, or something like that. The business name will always be what it is that actually brands you. So don't brand yourself on the page and then brand yourself in the picture. The picture is descriptive. We are all descriptive people. Short posts, make sure your page is complete. Um, you'll need to do it once, okay? So spend three or four hours on it, making it pop, yours pops. You don't need to do anything with it. I did it all for you. Because you know what? I love you. I was talking to you, Nikki, too, not your husband, just so that there's no... Your husband is fine, but I love him like I love you. So download the app pages. Who, who actually operates their phone um, and operates through Facebook? Yep. Stop. Yeah, download the app Pages, P-A-G-E-S. Facebook is you, Pages is your business. So even though you use Facebook through and can use your business, your app Pages actually gives you a whole lot more um, abilities and, and tools and is free. So it's white background with a yellow flag. Videos, Facebook loves videos. Matter of fact, did you know they've just scripted a whole bunch of TV shows? And they're going to be in the next few years exactly what we watch on Netflix. So when people actually buy, not Netflix, it'll be Facebook, but you'll watch TV and instead of clicking the, the icon Netflix and Stan, there'll be another one there, Facebook, and it'll have scripted TV shows. So that's where they're heading. That's why they're really looking for engagement. And they're going to, they've already surpassed so many things. They are completely information overload. When you consider they own so much of the information, they're now also trying to also surpass YouTube. So, and they've done it a few times. They've actually, they, if you look at, people now search Facebook for information more than they actually search Dr. Google. So, yeah, so it's the third biggest search engine in the world, in the world. So videos loves them, they actually commence scripted TV. She's done that. Our phone is your video. The camera on your phone is often than a ba better than a basic SLR. Um, now, in saying that, you still need a professional photographer every now and then. Russell Edmonds, put your hand up. He's awesome. He also does picture framings. He's done some great ones. But your phone, for simple taking of videos, for simple taking of photos, is perfect. Some people go, but I don't want to be um, on a video. Then walk around the room videoing the people. Walk around your products and services. Walk around your cafe. Walk around the glass shop. So it doesn't necessarily have to be you talking to camera, but if you're comfortable talking to camera, do it. No more than 45 seconds. So last night, for example, I was at uh, the Baldivis Rotary. I'm a Rotarian in Rockingham, but I went to Baldivis and I actually uploaded their Pride of Workmanship night onto the Facebook page because people trust you. They go, oh, you're a Rotarian? I'm a Rotarian as well. Wow, so-and-so got a, 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 I think, Impressions Catering. One of your ladies got a, an award last night. Yeah, so it's, it's about building the credibility. So there's a video link on here, ladies and gentlemen. It's a guy who runs a camera school. It's, again, through the uh, website. You'll actually find on that is the, uh, the link, and it's brilliant. What he teaches you with your, your SLR, your iPhone, is astronomical, really, really good. I can't believe it. I know I'm on time. <laughs> I'm shocking myself. <laughs> okay, those who know me should be saying something. <laughs> to use your phone, open the app pages, click on the video, create a 30-second video, write a comment, then post it or schedule it. When posting, make sure you only make your post with one photo attached or one video. Again, if you're creating more than one photo, build an album. Change your cover photo weekly. Use it as a sponsor of the week, player of the week, house of the week, employer of the week. Make sure when you upload your cover photo that you do also double click on the photo and write a comment. This is the one time you can actually write war and peace and we encourage you to go past to see more. Also, make sure on the cover photo there is a, a few sentences at the end. For more information about real estate, call Phil from Century 21 
blah, 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 blah. So always a call to action on the cover photos. Personally, I create my content on a desktop or a laptop, and then I respond using the app pages on my <coughs> iPhone. I schedule about one or two weeks in advance. You post as normal, put up a picture, one comment, and click the share now button. You'll get a drop bar, and that will actually say publish, draft, schedule now, or backdate. The two things I live on are drafts and schedule. Not the alcoholic draft. I like wine. I think I might have a wine. Yes, so. Um, publish now, I'll do every now and then. I use them from when I hit a save button and do the publishing, but for the most part I schedule everything. And what I do is I take a whole bunch of random <laughs> photos and then I actually put all these photos constantly in my draft so that when I actually go to my draft section, I know those photos have a memory for me, so I write my comment and then I take the draft to schedule and then schedule later on gets into posting. So I then, if I find something trending and I want to post it today, I post it, then I'll go back into the scheduler and move it around. So again, four times a week gives you that opportunity to actually be able to put regular content in. And sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, if you do post twice a day, who cares? Don't, don't you know, it's not, you're not going to be arrested for it, strip naked and have fun. <laughs> Is it just me? <laughs> I married an ex-police officer. <sighs> Memories. Your website is a treasure trove of short, sharp pieces of information. And ladies and gentlemen, don't give up. Have you seen the Malibu Fresh Essentials page? Anyone seen that page? It's amazing. So many people jump on it. It's a brilliant page. And it took four years to get to that level as it is. So, so many people jump on Facebook, they create page, they create content, they create information, and when they do that, they think it didn't work, it's been a week. I had a guy last week, he was with me for four weeks, and he goes, it's not working. I'm like, are you kidding? You've had three extra reviews, you've had two clients. He goes, yeah, it's not fast enough. It's not going to be fast enough. Your Facebook page is purely your credibility. It is where I can go back later on and say, wow, really? I want to look at what's up? Let's have a look at the What's Up Stand Up Paddleboard, not the, at the app, um, and I want to see what's he like. How does he handle his reviews? Oh, there's a bed and breakfast in um, uh, the, the area. I want to have a look. What do they think of it? What do they like? So your Facebook page over a period of time becomes your credibility. It becomes your story and becomes your tangible asset that you can sell at a later time. So don't worry about it being successful. Over a period of year, it's already successful. You already created all the content. And then as a customer, when I want to come and look at what you've done, created, thought, seen and, and sold, I'm confident because it's been an ongoing game that you've played. Check-in posters. Why is more important check-ins as opposed to likers? People chase the likers. Now, I understand I've asked for 20 extra likers and as a matter of fact, I want 60. But likers are not that important. They're just a tool to actually make your page look good. Um, check-ins really work. Check-ins go, so if I was to check into the steel tree, I check into the steel tree, it goes on my wall and my friends say and are recommended and know I'm not recommending the business, I'm using the business. So that's a really good referral. Tell your story, we go into the wine bar, somebody checks into the wine bar, Carol, I know, it's all of us, <laughs> what can I say? It's a drinking theme coming through here, can't you see? So in saying that, ladies and gentlemen, so many people jump on the page and how long are you at the wine bar? What are you doing? An hour later, there's 12 of us sitting around the wine bar and that is not uncommon in summer. When one of us checks into somewhere, our group of friends will actually go, I'll come and join you. And correct me if I'm wrong, Cliff, how many times has it been two of us to end up being, you know, five or six sitting around the table afterwards? Not only that, the very next day, ladies and gentlemen, is that Facebook will send me a, a, a link. You checked into ABC review them. They actually encourage me to review you. So check-ins are important because Facebook will ask you the next day to give a review on the business. Check-ins are important because they actually say, not only do I recommend this business, I'm actually using it right now. Many times when I've had people check into my Facebook workshop, what happens afterwards is people turn around and say, oh, I've been wanting to do Facebook. What was the workshop like? I kid you not, three or four times I've had people join me the following workshop afterwards purely from the check-ins. So a good Facebook page creates engagement. This will take about six months to develop 
and a few years to get people to regularly like you, trust you, and keep working with you. So make it part of your strategy. Four times a week is all you need to worry about. If you can't action four posts a week, then don't have a page. But let me tell you, it's not about whether or not you have a Facebook presence now, it's whether or not your business will survive without it. There's 150,000 people in Rockingham, give or take, 98% of those have a Facebook page, and out of that, about 80% are active on Facebook. So I talk about Facebook and Instagram a lot, but of course there's LinkedIn, there's Twitter, there's TripAdvisor. This, uh, they, they all have a space. However, um, tonight is only mostly Facebook and a little bit of Instagram. Facebook's algorithm will decide how valuable you are and how valuable your post is and give it organic reach dependent in part on how active your Facebook page is. Find pages to follow. These are gold, ladies and gentlemen. Finding similar businesses or industry leaders means that you're never at a loss for content. Adapt similar posts at similar times or share their posts if they're an industry leader. I look at overseas pages as well as local and often interstate, but I also follow other pages such as the Chamber and share business knowledge. Also local pages like Rockingham Visitor Centre and share what's on in our region. Dr Google is your best friend and YouTube is your best mate. Both have an abundance of information that is therefore for you to use, share and gain ideas from. Another aspect is you give you first. If you're posting on Facebook, don't go, how is everyone today? Don't go, how is everyone today? God, that is so trite. However, on Malibu Fresh, for example, I put up, when you were growing up, your parents always made you eat one fruit and vegetable that you hated. Mine was Brussels sprouts what was yours and the amount of me too underneath it not the me too as in well i've been you know with the me too movement but the me too of the brussels spouts mm. was astronomical because i gave me first people trusted in giving themselves to so if you're going to say anything always give your information first i have just watched a season of outlander <laughs> i know <laughs> Give me a moment and a cigarette. Anyone else watch it? You understand why I need a cigarette. I don't even smoke. However, when you put something up like that, it's like, oh my God, I've just watched Outlander. I need a cigarette and a drink. The amount of people underneath it that actually go totally hear you. What a great book. What a great series. And discussions ensure over that particular thing. So finding pages to follow, done that. Another aspect of posting, Century 21, we did that with the logo. Grab, people, grab people's attention, ladies and gentlemen, as much as you can and think outside the square. 90% of people are on Facebook and Instagram on a phone. Therefore, what we talk about in our industry is thumb stopping. So as you're going through the phone, you're going like this, like this, like this, like this, stop. And a little trick is when I take a photo, instead of taking a photo like this, I'll take a photo like that. Or I'll take a photo like that or I'll take a photo like that, like that, like that. Just a little bit off kilter can make such a difference, such a difference. So do you use Canva? It is gold, ladies and gentlemen. Canva is amazing. It is basically a graphic design program, nowhere near as good. I am starting on that. Nowhere near as good as the graphic designer out the back. Stand up, Erica. But for your basics, <laughs> Ahead of you, baby. Um, but uh, for basic uh, memes and basic little things, Canva works really, really well. For professional um, uh, graphic design work, absolutely go to a graphic designer. On average, social media users will check their posts 10 times a day. Millennials, at least three times that. Social media, again, is social. Don't sell at me. Social media is social. Make it interesting, make it friendly. It was never meant to be an advertising tool. It just became one. People are there to connect with friends, their family, and your business simply became a byproduct of the platform, a necessary evil to make that platform financially viable. I always say Facebook is your own private TV station, full of comedies, love stories, documentaries, soap operas, reality shows, and ads. But again, who watches the ads? They watch and get involved when you're real. Be personal, cool, but not private. 
No one wants to hear about your products and services all the time. However, explain to me how I can eat your products and services if you're a restaurant. Explain to me how I'm going to be prettier by using the dental guards. Explain to me. Don't say he's a dental guard, it's $4.99. Create an emotion attached to that, um, that product and service. They watch and get involved with your reel. Write down, when I, I hear people say all the time, when I write down, I, I, I sit down and I'm ready to post, I don't know what to do. And I hear that all the time. So I've got some things that might help you guys. I use the safe posts a lot. So as I'm going through the field <coughs> and I'm watching my own Facebook thread, I'll hit the save button because quite often the content on there becomes the content that I either share, like or reuse on my own page. The only thing that I hate about Facebook is it doesn't allow you to actually hit the share button um, and schedule it. You've actually got to save it and then schedule it. Yeah, so it's annoying. If they allowed you to share it straight away and schedule it, I swear to God I'd be the happiest person. Not as happy as when I found out that there's a man in Rockingham selling Arabic food. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> I'm three wishes. I have an exercise book on my desk. I keep thoughts, ideas and notes in. On my desktop, I have a folder that says Facebook content and in there I keep photos, ideas, links and anything I may use later in subfolders. I look at competitors' page and I see what's working for them. I never steal their work, but I can't steal the idea if the idea is the same as everybody else, if that makes any sense. So I, I adapt accordingly, but I don't steal work. I use the draft scheduler a lot. The draft is my new best friend. I'll take loads of photos, I'll find loads of links, I'll find loads of information, and I'll put them in the draft. I think in RBS, we've got 168 drafts waiting to go out for business tips and ideas and things like that. And also the 56 members that uh, I have as part of the Breakfast Club. So it's amazing how much you can put in there. Um, I tested, want to test how many could be in the draft section. Um, basically, when I'm ready to actually post, the photo, the links, the information reminds me of what my original thought was. I then open it, edit it, write the content, schedule and send it out. I kid you not, and <laughs> those that are my clients don't listen, uh, but it takes me five minutes now to do those posts because the content have been gathered and gathered and gathered. And by the time I'm ready to post them, they're already there. So it's about gathering that information. And again, over a three or four month period, you'll find you'll have an abundance of information. Now, ladies and gentlemen, rehash your old posts. If your post worked three months ago, do it again today. Just change it up a little bit. Yeah, reshare it, redo it. If it was relevant, you know, obviously you don't put winter stuff in summer, but at the same time, a good majority of your posts can be reshared over and over. So reshare them. Here's a tip, open your folder, Call it Facebook, grab a journal or an exercise book. Write down as many topics, ideas, questions, insights about your business as you can in five minutes. Don't filter, just write. Think about frequently asked questions. What are your clients like? Who what worked well before? What's happening in your life? What are you promoting now? What do you want to increase your sales of? Just write. These form the basis of your content. Dot point ideas. Who are your charities? Who are your clients? Promote them. What awards have you won? Create a credibility list. Again, each one of these will form the basis of your post. And by the time you've brain dumped after 30 minutes, you'll have six months worth of marketing promotional posts. Think about it, I'm a Rotarian. We're down on the Rockingham foreshore. The bus service is right behind us. Elvis Presley once stayed in our house. Brain dump. All these little things about your business. I swear, once you start writing, you won't stop. You know, who will go to, to the stand-up paddleboarding? Who will go to an SEO? Who will go to Fremantle Ports? Just brain dump, brain dump, brain dump. And you'll find that at the end of it, you'll have a whole bunch of posts. When writing on your sites, it's more important for your marketing to be about your customers and not about your business. Share posts from other pages. If you've already posted that for um, that day, click the save button and then share. So if you see something you've posted today, then you see something on a wall that's interesting, click the save button because then post that post tomorrow or reschedule the next day. Make sure that you goes on the page you are, oh, yes. So when you're sharing, this is one thing that I've had a few times myself, is 
when you're sharing, ladies and gentlemen, and you go to the share button and you click, remember up the top, you want it to go to your business page. So if you just hit share now, it actually goes to your personal page. So make sure that it goes up to the top and goes onto the page you want it to go on. When you've got multiple pages like I do, you need to make sure it goes onto the right one. So um, uh, where is it? Don't expect every post to have a reaction. Just make sure on average your posts get an interaction. People are voyeurs. They will watch and only interact when they feel safe on your page. For six months, I worked on one page. Then all of a sudden, it started to get comments. So when you're at a chamber function and someone says, oh, my God, I saw you up at Coral Bay, they know and you know that the only way they could have seen it was because they read it on your Facebook page. You must decide what your page is for. Is it for selling items? Is it for teaching about your business? Create a list of what you want to achieve and work backwards. Why would your customers care? What is the angle? What is the format? What is it you're going to do? A social media site is a valuable tool and a sellable asset. A good site is one that had loads of information that can be searchable, be real and be you. Again, at tag your business, at tag your business when you're writing from a desktop. Write as if you're speaking to one person. Use only one photo or one video in an awesome post. Remember, if you create any more than one, Facebook will split the post. Keep it short and simple. If you've gone to see more, it's gone too much. Don't forget a call to action. If you say, call me, then please, ladies and gentlemen, add your number. Don't hashtag. People see that as spammy, plus the searchable actions that a hashtag offers on Instagram are extremely limited on a Facebook. The exception is a brand or a movement like Me Too or support the foreshore businesses during the renos and use these hashtags only in a sentence. So when you see these people double barrel across from Instagram over, don't do that. One post on Facebook and then maybe a week later do that same post on Instagram adding the hashtags. When people like your post, post hover over the likes list and Facebook gives you the option. So when, you, when someone likes it, you've got 33 people like this post. Click and hover over the like button, the likes, right? And a list will drop down of all the people that have liked it. And Facebook give you the opportunity to then invite those people to like your page. So click invite, 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 invite. If you're not acting, interacting with others, you cannot expect people to interact with you. If you wanna get likes on your page, give likes. If you want to get comments on your page, give comments. Respond to everything, every like, every comment. So if somebody likes it, that's nice. But if somebody makes a comment, hit the reply button, say something. Never, ever, ever double post. So double post by all means today on Facebook and then the same post on Instagram a week later. But don't because the audience sees it. And not only that, I'll let you know a little secret, it actually downplays your reach when you spam it across the three. The three. Each platform likes it to be autonomous with its with its own so facebook there instagram there don't say you can't use the same post i'm just saying use it a week or so later hashtags on facebook if you take away anything from tonight stop hashtagging all over facebook look at mari smith look at facebook's page look at zuckerberg's none of them hashtag why because facebook reads it as spam if you must, as you want to, create the trend, as I said before. Social Media Examiner actioned 800,000 posts on Facebook. 200,000 of those had a hashtag. And their research showed that those with the hashtag got the least amount of reach. Not only that, when you at tag, notification comes back that says ABC made a comment on your page. When you hashtag, it actually takes it away from your page and you don't get notified about what happens on your page. Stop trying to be perfect and stop trying to get every post to go viral. Often the ones that you won't think will work, work wonders. Just do it. And sometimes I've heard people say at my Facebook, I'm scared. And I tell you what, when Heather did that with the Rockingham Visitor Centre, I rang I said, just do it. I think she ended up with 68 comments on that very first post. So do it. Just do it. Not every post is going to get a comment and interaction or a reaction. You guys pretty much get one on every one. But that's the nature of your business. 
in saying that, just do it. All right? Stop trying to be perfect. As Peter Butler calls it, imperfect action. It's also not about finding more likers. It's about interacting with the customers you already have. Did you know if you keep your clients happy, they'll advertise for you? It's about posting every few days so over the time your site becomes a case history. This is what creates credibility. If you make people happy, then you make more money for you. It really is that simple. Technology is moving fast and we in the technological revolution. However, as humans, we're still the same. Don't be overwhelmed, just do one thing and from that another will grow, but do it. It doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be you. You may now all applaud. <laughs> Perfect timing. As I said, ladies and gentlemen, this is a seminar. It's not, can you, okay, we, what we're going to do is we're going to finish the live feed now. All right? But, 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 thank you very much everyone who watched, if anyone watched. If they didn't, this is why I say don't use live feed, because when no one watches, then you look like an idiot. Um, can you save it to film? It gives you the option at the end now to hit save to camera, or it gives you the option to just delete it all. <laughs>